Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com. Welcome right into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial where today we're going to take a look at three ways, three steps to quickly make basically any photo pop in Adobe Photoshop. What do I mean by pop? Well, it's like a, a nice sort of subtle flat and faded contrast boost with some tonal color adjustments that just take a photo from being mm to mm. Something kind of like that. If you enjoy the video, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you really enjoy the video, consider picking up a copy of my retouching course. It's going to help you up your game when it comes to retouching photos in Photoshop. And it helps support this channel and brings us more of these videos. Thank you for that. Let's jump into Photoshop and check this thing out. Well, here we are in Adobe Photoshop, and let's just get right to the point. The first thing I want to do is make sure that my adjustments panel here is wide open, and I want to grab a curves adjustment right there. It's going to drop a curves adjustment layer in place. Uh, you really want to know how to use curves, especially if you're going to be editing your photos in Photoshop. It's just such an incredibly powerful tool. I've got some tutorials that I've made on it that I think you might really like. Here's what we're going to do. Whoop, we're not going to add a point there. That was a mistake. I'm going to grab this black point here, and I'm going to drag it straight up eh, just until the image really kind of loses a bit of contrast. Then I'm going to click somewhere out here, and I'm going to add a, a point, and I'm going to drag down to kind of re-darken the photo. But obviously, it's a bit dark overall, but we're getting these like soft, faded, you know, almost milky shadows. Even just this seems to be increasing the contrast quite a bit, but I'm not finished yet. I want to add a point somewhere right out about here and just push a little bit more light into those middle tones, middle into high tones. It's really going to boost up the, the color of her skin and the shirt and the highlights in her hair, stuff like that. And then I might even pull the white point down a little bit, just kind of fade some of that a little uh, so we're not getting quite the bite on the highlights that we were. So there's before, there's after. This is the first step. Next, we want to change some of sort of the color and, and the color tone in the image. We're going to do that using a color balance adjustment layer. Now, I, I, I'd be remiss if I don't add. We could do a lot of this using red, green, and blue channels here in curves, uh, but... I'm, I'm trying to make this a little bit more friendly for the masses. So uh, sometimes just throwing a quick color balance adjustment layer on is so quick and easy. And you're like, you know what? Hey, I want to add, a, let's add a little bit of red to this, right? We're going to add some red to the mid-tones. Let's go plus 20. That looks pretty good. Let's uh, maybe we'll add a little bit of green in there too. It'll be very subtle here. Maybe we'll go plus 7. And I think let's try to add some blue as well. That looks kind of nice. So we'll go plus 20, plus 7, plus 7. Uh, and then I'm going to go over here. Let's hit the highlights. Normally I hit the highlights last, but I'm feeling a little rebellious today. Let's add some red to the highlights. Again, because I know that her skin is primarily the highlight adding red to the skin rather than than this cyan blue it just makes sense because your skin's the, the pigment in skin is generally going to have reds and yellows pretty much regardless of ethnicity you're going to have a high uh, color count of reds and yellows in the skin so pushing some red and yellow into the skin is usually going to be a nice way to go I'm not going to mess with magenta or green here I kind of like where that's sitting and I don't want a crazy like magenta or green color cast that just looks hideous let's add some yellow here so we'll go yeah i think that's kind of nice just we'll go negative 10 we'll keep it nice and rounded off just like that and then last but not least we'll hit up the shadows here now in the shadows if i add a lot of red you can see well the darker parts of the image are the shadowy parts red is going to really darken things whereas if i add cyan it's giving me that nice aqua background and that aqua blue well remember aqua and blue see the cyan the opposite of cyan is red and the opposite of blue is yellow and what do we put in her skin we put a lot of yellow and red in her skin so if the background behind her has a high cyan and blue count, it's going to have a very beautiful contrast with the colors that we're, we're sort of pushing to dominate in her skin and her hair and even in the shirt that she's wearing here. So let's go like, I don't know, right on negative 15 or so with the cyan. Um, and I would prefer to go magenta because magenta is a little, you know, more in the cyan and blue family than green. And again, remember, just trying to get that nice blue cyan contrast background to foreground. And then we'll push some blue in there as well. So we'll go, I don't know, plus, plus five, plus six in the blue department. So there's before the color change, there's after the color change. And you can see that just sort of makes it look like we've changed the contrast a lot. We can shut off both these layers. There's the photo we dragged in. Here's where we are now. We've really just added a lot to the photo and we're not finished yet because the third step is don't sleep on, well, don't sleep on the color lookup tables layers, but we're not going to use that here. I'm going to go with a selective color layer. I'm going to click on this and I'm, I'm actually going to end up dragging it down above the photo, but let's try just applying it overall and see what it looks like. And then we'll drag it down there and maybe readjust if we have to. So I'm going to start with the blacks. Um, these are literally the blacks, the very darkest of shadows. If I say um, take a bunch of yellow out of them, you're going to see just the very darkest areas of the hair. The highlights are almost totally unaffected and all the darker stuff gets this super heavy blue color cast. That's not, that's not what we're going for here. 
what I'll do is I'll leave cyan and magenta at zero. I actually want to push some yellow into it. So I'll push yellow up and you want to be really careful here. You go too far and it really starts to look bad. So let's push some yellow into there. And then I want to remove some of the black. This is going to give me kind of a heavy faded look. Now this is a little too heavy, but I know that I'm going to be dragging it down beneath these layers that are adding contrast. So I'll just, I'm going to leave it at negative 10 and we'll readjust if we have to. In fact, I might even push it a little further. Let's go like negative 15, right? You can see it, it legitimately kind of looks bad, right? Or at least it's not the look we're going for. I'm going to uh, pop up here to neutrals and for the neutrals let's push a little bit of cyan into it it's maybe five six something like that uh, with magenta we'll push just just a kiss of magenta i don't want to go too far on magenta and then with yellow we'll push just a just a little bitty bit of yellow into there as well not too much you can see it's almost giving us this green yellow shadow effect and i'm not going to mess around with the level of blacks now i'm just going to drag selective color down beneath my other layers right above the background and if i shut that off there's what we had before here's what we have now it's, there's a little bit too much of that black fade going on. So let's go back to our blacks. And I'm going to just pull that back to, I don't know, 8, 9, 10, something like that. Negative 7. That looks kind of good. Right? There's before, there's after. See how it just kind of mellows things out? Now, you may be asking, why didn't you just start with selective color and then add curves and color balance? Wouldn't that be more straightforward? Well, yes. And you could do that. Here's why I didn't, though. The selective color adjustment layer is going to be more of like the finishing touch type effect. And if I add it to the image right off the bat, you can see it's almost sort of like, what did that do? It just kind of sucked more contrast out, began color influencing the shadows and things like that. When I'm working with an image, I tend to like to begin infusing the contrast side of my tonal and color adjustments first. That's why curves is almost always my go-to. So I begin with that. Then I say, you know what? Let me add some color to this. This is a beautiful, sharp image now. And now I can go back and try to style and maybe fade some of those shadows a little bit and give my image a little bit more of that kind of textured crunchy depth that I'm looking for and maybe even if the selective color is still too much yeah, just pull back on the, the layer opacity a little bit. Maybe go back to 50%, something like that. There's before, there's after. Or if you just straight up don't like it, the beauty of this is you can stop any point along the way. But with these three steps, you can take any photo. And if you apply nice color and nice contrast, you can really make anything look pretty decent. Ah, yes, I knew it would be quick. I knew it would be easy. See how simple that is? And the difference is so drastic. I think you're really going to like it. And the the technique and the way I go about applying this stuff, it really, we used a studio shot photo, but it really applies to anything. A landscape photo, product photos, just general location lit portraits of kids running around the park. There's always color and tone that can be boosted, affected, changed, that can take that photo and just mm, give it that extra va-va-voom. And if there's something I like, it's a little more va va voom. Ladies and gentlemen, for covering these features and these three simple adjustment layers in Adobe Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodsonTutVid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do. And this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.